What's up, y'all? It's Chappelle, your chief entertainment officer on the big deck energy below deck RHAP rehab up. Sasha is having technical difficulties this week. I don't know if it's the signal or the time zone, but she's seemingly having whatever issue Jared has been having these past few episodes. However, unlike Jared, she will be back next week for next week's episode of Below Deck. But with me today, it's our backup bosun coming in as a temp. It's Jason Ork. Jason, welcome back. What's going on, Chappelle? It's great to be back talking Below Deck. Great to podcast with you. I'm feeling like Captain Carrie right now. I'm just here to fill in, do my part, and help out the crew. Listen, I, you have been uh, such a big help in the past coming in and the clutch for us. And so I thank you so much for doing that again. Uh, but, you know, I want to thank you so much for tagging in last minute. I know we're short staffed here on the below deck wrap up feed this time, but everybody's just going to do their part. We're down one person, but on this episode, they're down two. Jason, I have so many questions for you. Are you ready to get into this episode? I am so excited to talk about it and the whole season. Yes. No, we have so much to catch up on. Okay. First and foremost, thank you to all our loyal listeners. Thank y'all for bearing with us because we're getting this out episode a little late. Like I said, Sasha's having technical difficulties. And thank everyone for leaving those five-star reviews on the wrap ups feed. Um, I don't know if I even noticed this before, Jason, but Sasha and I did get a couple of other reviews recently. We got one from uh, Tuesday. I said, is this a safe space? I only watch these shows because of Sasha and Chappelle's recaps. They crack me up and are fun to listen. If I'm really, uh, if I'm being really real, sometimes I don't even watch the episode. I just listen to the podcast. Don't tell Andy. Sasha and Chappelle are the best. Okay. So thank you, Tuesday. And we got another review from Kate Shiverdeck. It says, Sasha and Chappelle are so much fun. Their Bravo coverage is great. And I'd love to see them cover Martha's Vineyard. Jason, are you familiar with Martha's Vineyard? Have you watched well, that? I know what it is, but I'm not familiar with the show. So me neither. So Sasha keeps talking about it and saying that she wants to cover it. And so I've been thinking about it now. It's about to drop. It should drop maybe, I think, within a day or two of this podcast dropping. So I don't have a, t a lot of time to get caught up, but I might watch the premiere of season two and see if it's interesting and then talk about it on Recap Kickback. If it's good, Jason, we will let you know so that you can get Definitely. caught up. Well, and also yes. that the first review you read, it was not written by me, but like that person, your recaps also got me into Below Deck. Because you and Sasha were covering it, I started watching him and am now an enormous Below Deck fan. Yes, Jason, thank you so much for the support. First things first, tell me about this Below Deck binge that you've done because you have seen way more Below Deck than I've seen. Uh, and I talk about it every week with Sasha. She's always catching, it, catching me up. So how has that been going back and watching all these past seasons of Below Deck? Well, I've only seen two past seasons. Okay. Um, I just happened to find it one weekend. It was on TV for like four days in a row on Bravo. I set my DVR and over the course of two months, I watched it. It was with Kate before mm -hmm. Traders. So I got to see who she was and I love the show. It is so entertaining. I also want to go be a guest on a yacht. My family's actually had this conversation because my brother is also a big below deck fan. So we're okay. trying to convince our parents to make it happen, but it's been a journey. I love watching it week to week. I'm just I'm here for it, and I'm loving the season. I, I love Captain Carrie. Yes, Captain Carrie is so interesting, Jason, because I, I think I got here when I started watching Below Deck. It was Captain Glenn, and then oh, it was... Him. Yeah, exactly. So Captain Glenn was on for a season that I saw. Then Captain Jason uh, over at, um, at, I believe it was Down Under. And then we got Captain Sandy at Below Deck Man. And now we're back here with Captain Carrie, but... Jason, I argue that Captain Carey is probably my favorite so far. I know he had a bad time on adventure, but he's doing great this season. Because I've never seen him from adventure. That's not part of my journey with him. Same. He is the best. I've seen the old seasons with Captain Lee. I saw Captain Sandy. I saw two episodes of Jason's season. Carey mm -hmm. is the best. He cares about them as people and as employees. And that's why they're all performing. They want to be the best. And I think that's why there's no drama because they feel safe working for him. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's like work stuff but you're right nobody is fighting like you know like they used to on these past seasons it's not a lot of beef it's it's a lot of surface level stuff a lot of you know like really small interpersonal interactions so i've been loving captain carrie on this season but i have to know we haven't talked at all this season we're seven episodes in who are your faves to this point catch me up how are you feeling about this season of below deck i think chef anthony's my favorite gotta be right he's amazing 
He's so kind. He's family oriented like me. He's drama free. And the food he makes, Chappelle, can we get him to cater our next meal together? Like bring him to the States. He can make French food. I don't care. Yeah, no, you're right. Sometimes I watch this and I think, okay, if me, Sasha and Jason and Ty were on another trip, what would we be eating? And Anthony's got it down packed. I mean, of all the chefs I've seen, they're all pretty good. The ones that I've seen so far, I haven't had any really disaster chefs. I've heard about some on Below Deck, but I have no complaints with him. I be, I think the first episode, he was a little slow on the delivery, but aside from that, everything's been great. It's been great and it looks great. I think he's competing on Top Chef. Oh yeah, yeah. They uh, the the listeners were telling me that they've changed the camera up too. Now they're like they're using like food specific cameras, and you can and you can really tell that it looks the presentation looks amazing. The food looks great. I don't think there's been one complaint about any of the food aside from how long it took them to get out the those first couple meals when they were getting the charters going. Um, but yeah, no complaints here. Um, what do you think about, because I, I, we're going to get to J Jared and Kat, obviously, in a minute. But what do you think about some of the other people? How do you feel about Barbie? I know she's been a very polarizing figure this season. Barbie is fascinating. Mm -hmm. I want to like her. I think she's a good person. She does work really hard. She reminds me a little bit of Nat from last season. Mm, yeah, I um, see where it. She's not getting the appreciation she feels she deserves for because of her hard work and doesn't always mm -hmm. feel acknowledged. But I want to see her mix it up, cause the drama. And like she just let Jared down like a sick puppy. Like I <laughs> I thought she was gonna serve him back. Like when he did that song to her, you know, that rhyme he did, he made. Mm -hmm. Um she's entertaining though, and I love how much she loves Judaism, as I'm also Jewish. And so that really, you know, intrigued me in that episode. It really took me by surprise. Oh yeah, no. Uh, Barbie's been a lot of she's had a lot of surprises. I, I I definitely thought she would be a little bit more drama filled because at first it seemed like she was a little combative. We saw her and Fraser not really getting along. I still think it's very weird that we never see her and Zandy talk. Maybe I'm just tripping Ever. and looking too far into it. Yeah, I, but never see them talk. Um, but this was a quiet episode for Barbie because ultimately this episode was all about Cat and Jared. Throughout the season, people have been hinting that, oh, this season of Below Deck is going to have the most firings of any season. And in one episode, we get two firings. Are you surprised that it was Kat and Jarrett who ended up, uh, you know, taking the L in this episode? Not at all. These were the mm -hmm. most predictable firings from the first episode. <laughs> and I, I don't mean to, like, discredit them. You know, they got on the show. This is their careers. But it was so obvious they were out of place from day mm -hmm. one. And it was yeah. just a matter of time. When was this going to happen? And it just felt like they were both on a downward spiral and there was nothing they could do or anyone else could do to lift them up and get them on the right direction. Right. People have tried to help them. You know, I, I think so this much. is the first, this is maybe the second firing I've ever, I've seen on Below Deck. I think the, the last one was kind of the, 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 you know, the sexual misconduct firing that I saw. That wasn't great. I think when uh, last season, on Below Deck, yeah. Oh, yeah. That too. Um, so, yeah. But I think like everything else has been just people just kind of like leaving, you know, uh, whereas this felt like both of these people needed to be put out of their misery. Someone needed to come in and release them from this job. And exactly. And why did they go on the show in the first place? Like, clearly they were going through issues. And did they really think that like, oh, let me just go on the show. Let me get on below deck and everything will just become like hunky dory. Like, is that real life? Mm -mm, can't be and, and it's like would you want to go through all of this with all the cameras around too it just feels like just a bad timing and also something i wouldn't want to do publicly and it was hard for me as a viewer to watch them going through mm -hmm. it you know we've all been down these roads like them before not happy and i would hate to be going through that with cameras all over me you're on a boat you're away from everything that makes you feel safe and we are here to watch it. Like, that's not fun for me to watch on Below Deck. I want to see drama. I want to see drunk guests getting in fights, falling out of hot tubs, <laughs> or, or drama at the bar with the, with the crew, not them going mm. through emotional turmoil. Yeah, this is not the type of drama we wanted, but let's get into it. So straight out of the gate, Captain Carey comes and shuts down this argument between Jared and Kyle. Uh, it didn't look like they had gotten that heated. It looked like they were having a heated exchange, but apparently they were yelling because it woke Captain Carey up. And I think this was the second time in one night. So he was done with it, Jason. And this is the only thing I really remember from Kyle in this whole episode. We haven't yeah. talked 
And yet I really like him. I think he has so much more to give on the show. And hopefully now that Jared and Kat are gone, he can get some of that spotlight. Right. No, you're, you're right about Kyle because he's so chill. Kyle does not have a complaint about anything. I think uh, Anthony also is very chill. I think we have a lot of really relaxed people on this uh, on this charter. And this crew is just, they're too laid back. You know, there's nobody who really wants to argue too much. Like I said, we see Barbie and Fraser going get it every now and then. But a lot of this is very chill. I'm wondering if that's going to change now that we're going to see the personnel and the staff change a little bit moving on in the season. It, it might, but it's Captain Carey's leadership. He was chill. I mean, imagine if that would have been Sandy getting woken up the second time over this fight, really over nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or even Lee, I think, would have lost it. Yeah, Captain Carey handles this pretty well. He sends them back to bed, and, you know, we kind of see different people kind of talking about it a little bit. But the next morning, first thing in the morning, he's like, all right, we got to talk. Uh, and when it comes to Jared, it just seems like the weight of all of his stress is just bearing down on him. We see clips of him being stressed about his kid, about his uh, relationship with Barbie, his poor performance at work. And I that think comment at this point, the guest made about his yeah, the team. comment the guest made. Yeah, Jason, what did you think about that comment? Because I mean, I, she didn't know anything about Jared to be saying that. I mean, what, what she said, he couldn't get any lower than this, or he's lucky he's cute, or something like that. It was pretty bad. But why does he care? She is drunk <laughs> out of her mind. She she did not even see him. <laughs> like she saw three people walking up, even mm -hmm. though it was just Jared by himself, and that broke his heart. And I just yeah. like that to me immediately showed that he was going to get fired or he would be leaving the show very soon because of how he reacted. Um, someone in a stronger headspace, I think, that wasn't going through all this family drama just would have laughed or like dissed it back to her. That's what I would have done. That's what you would have done. Yeah, yeah, I probably would have laughed or made a I would have made a joke at her expense for sure. Um, and yeah, and that's just how I think if you're if you're secure you know, then, then that stuff doesn't bother you as much. Because we saw somebody make a comment like that to Barbie, you know, like, oh, well, you can't get any lower than this or, you know, something like that. And Barbie kind of made a comment, but she went on about her day. We haven't heard anything else about that comment. It didn't stick with her because she's a lot more secure in her position. But with him being going, like, going through so much stress and being so, like, you know, I guess uncomfortable at work, right? He's not, he's not doing his best. He can't get in, in touch with his kid. There's a lot on his plate. And so that's another thing that really stuck with him. Uh, and so I wasn't shocked that Captain Carey pulled him to the side. Did you think that this was going to be him getting fired, though? Because I don't know. Like I said, because I haven't seen that many people get fired. I was expecting this to be, you know, like a stern talking to. I didn't think this was going to be the end. I thought it was going to be the end. You knew I it. Stern talking to was set in the, I think, the very beginning of the season. Captain mm -hmm. Carey set his expectations for them. And this is not his first offense where he's had to talk to him and have that stern talk, you know, after he was hung over just a few episodes ago. Mm -hmm. And, but I also thought Carrie handled it like Captain Carrie handled it really well. Like that's the, the, a very nice way to fire someone. Also, I think other captains would have handled it really differently. Yeah. Um, no, you're great. Even about the, uh, the way he fired him. Right. So first he take he goes and he gets the other people he thought were, I guess, the more sensible people in the matter. So he goes to Kyle because he says Kyle was chilling. He seemed like he was de-escalating things. He goes to Barbie and he asked them basically the same questions. You know, did you feel threatened? What was it about? And they both give their point of view. Kyle says, you know, uh, Jared was just tripping because he was drunk, but he doesn't throw him under the bus. He's like, you know, we were all drinking. And then Barbie says maybe it has something to do with some jealousy about Jared uh feeling some type of way about kyle being in the bedroom with barbie and it all just escalated at the same time so with that information he goes and gets jared and says all right we've talked about this you've been stressed out clearly your head's not in it and you're still drinking to the point where you're getting out of control you're in leadership and you shouldn't act like this so we're gonna have to let you go so that you can get your yourself together and get in the right headspace. And I think framing it like that really does feel like he's doing it for Jared's best interest and also keeping the safety of the boat in mind because you can't have someone acting like Jared and, and keeping the morale on the boat the same. It's it's going to escalate and it's going to boil over more than once. We've seen it a little bit earlier in the season. And I think at this point, he's just not willing to have the conversation again. And it would 
increase the risk of the safety of the crew and the guests because if his if he's not in the right headspace and he is there trying to maneuver the boat or pull the mm. chains up or and he's not thinking or looking because he's so stressed out they're all at risk and that's where i think he understood that and under, was able to accept that he's not giving it his all as if he wanted to um i thought he was set up to failure from the start though yeah were you surprised that he took it so well cuz he didn't he didn't push back at all I was not surprised at all. I think he handled it so maturely. I think he knew he could see the writing on the wall. He knew this was it. Um, after mm -hmm. he woke up Captain Carey and he came down, I think he he knew it was coming. Yeah. Uh, for me, it feels like Jared agreed with everything Captain Carey said. You know, like you, you're not in the right space for this. And we'll see when he's doing his interview after he said, I just lost my job, but I feel a lot better. You know, I feel like a weight off of me. And I think that's like the telltale sign right like you lose a job and although it's an uncomfortable situation you already feel less stressed because you were carrying so much of it with you so yeah jared was here for a good time not a long time seven episodes i really i don't know like i i figured he would be the one getting fired i just didn't realize it would be so soon which is a, another you know another credit to captain carry because he's knocking this out before it gets too far and it was surprising that Captain Carey picked him all along now that we've seen how his story ends. Mm -hmm. um, because what I was, I'm under the impression, you know, Ben, who gets promoted, was the bosun in a previous seasons on this boat. And he knows the boat better. And I'm so curious to hear how Captain Carey thought Jared would be a better bosun being brand new to the boat over someone like Ben, who's just has more familiarity with the processes and how things go on the ship. Or the yacht. No, that's a that's a really good point because yeah, if if J if we see that Jared didn't do too well, but then in this episode we're gonna see that Ben immediately rises to the occasion. Captain Carey doesn't have any complaints with him at all. He's like he knows the boat, he knows what he's doing, and Jason he's eager to prove that he can do this. You know, this like it feels like this is the job Ben really wanted all all along, and now that he has his chance, he's really gonna um, like take full control of it and make the best of the situation. And I think. Because of that, he was kind of letting Jared fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just waiting for it, you know? Okay. So he did say at one point, yeah, you know, when we're undocking, I was watching Jared, and I could see the mistakes he was going to make before he made them. I was like, then why didn't you help him? So, yeah, now that you mention it, you think it was a little sabotage? You think he was he was just down with him failing his way out of the off the boat? I don't think it was sabotage. I think he was just being a bystander, watching, observing, but not wanting to help. Yeah, it's just like, if we fail, we fail, but it's not my fault. It's your fault, and then we'll get you out of here, and then we can move forward without you. Because he knew if Jared got out of there, he would immediately be promoted. Yeah, and it happens so quickly. I mean, I don't even think Jared is off the boat good before Captain Carey's like, all right, Ben, we need to talk. Because now they're down one person. The charter is going to start in a, in a few hours. And we need somebody to be in control of this. Um, so Captain Carey says he's going to help out wherever he can, but he needs Ben to be the bosun uh, in the meantime. And Ben's ready. He's pumped. And I... We haven't got a lot from Ben. We've seen some drama between Ben and Sonny a little bit, just a little, a pinch of that. Uh, we've seen also, you know, some, some, I guess, uh, some relationship stuff between Ben and Sonny to call it lack of a better term. Uh, well, but I'm curious now, to see how it evolves now that he's her boss. Well, they seemingly don't even want to acknowledge it. So it happens. Sonny says, yeah, I went to sleep with a deckhand, woke up with a bosun and that sexy. <laughs> But Jason, this is an HR nightmare. I just this this is not okay, right? <laughs> like, uh, I feel like if you're dating somebody who is your boss, that's just a natural thing that everybody should be aware of, right? Everybody should be, and I I wouldn't say dating is probably what they're doing, but the sexual relationship that they're having cannot be good for business, Jason. Not good for business at all. And mm -hmm. I cannot wait to see it erupt and create the drama that I watch the show for because like there's new crew joining there are two new people and what if maybe sunny gets interested in one of them but more predictably i think ben is going to get interested in one of them and kind of leave sunny in the dust yeah you know this feels like typical below deck nonsense you know the fact that these people are always sleeping with their supervisors it's it's rare that i've seen so far that it is just like two deck hands who don't didn't know there's no um 
power structure or hierarchy, you know, dynamic difference. It's always like it's always somebody's boss and then someone who, you know, they're subordinate. It's always like that on Below Deck. And by now, you would think that there's been some type of policy in place that says you can't do this. But no, they, they said they this is going to be fine. Yeah, this is fine. Sunny says she's dated her boss before, Jason. Clearly, it didn't work out. <laughs> they're not together now. So what do we yeah, think is going to happen here? Ended. Yeah, I don't see this happening. But, I don't see this ending well. But it did work out really well for Anthony's ex-wife because, you know, with his uncle, who was her boss. So oh. some of these type of relationships <laughs> do work out. Oh, my God. Jason, okay, really quickly. What do you think about that situation? The uncle left the, – the his uncle stole his wife. My biggest question is, was Anthony the chef on the boat while it all happened? Like, was he working on the yacht with them? Or was he just like working at a restaurant or in culinary school? Because that detail has always been left out of the story, Chappelle. If they're all on that boat at the same time, I swear to God, <laughs> I can't do this. A movie. Like, like, yeah, we got it. We got to get everybody. I'm telling you, we're going to do a panel discussion. You can come as well. We need to get these cast members up here, at least Anthony up here, so we can ask the real questions because they just they cannot just sprinkle this stuff on us and then leave us high and dry. I need more information. And then we need more information about what their family holiday celebrations are like. How, how awkward is it? Who does Anthony bring with him? Is it one of his uncle's exes? Is, is his uncle still with his ex, with his ex wife? Like, is, is that his aunt? Is like, are they still a family? <laughs> his aunt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, to me, this is the biggest storyline of the season <laughs> that has just been completely shoved under the rug. Yeah. They're not giving me enough, but, Look again, Anthony doesn't bring us much drama. So that little bit of that little tidbit of information, I'm like, okay, bring Anthony back next season so we can get more and more. Uh, because I have to know what else is left with that. But yeah, there will probably be some drama with Sonny and Ben. But right now, it looks it looks cool. They're like, oh yeah, congratulations. They sneaking off, kissing and stuff every now and then. Sonny's getting to um, she's getting to uh do the tender. She's like, I've never got to do that before. This is good. I guess it doesn't hurt if you're sleeping with Eating your supervisor. Boss, yeah. yeah, you know, not saying that that's why she's getting that type of treatment, but I mean, if you're doing it right, then I guess it pays off. Uh, yeah, but that being again, said, though, I got to say, mm -hmm. I do like Sunny. Something about her, let's like her vibe, her energy on the screen, she's drawing me in. And so I want yes. her to do better than Ben, have her own journey without him, like kick him to the curb. Yeah, you know, she they're not locked down yet. You know, they're still just messing around, it seems. And like you said, we're going to get a Jared replacement soon. And in the scenes for the next episode, uh, it looked like Sunny was very impressed with what she saw. Mm. Yeah, she said, I didn't oh, my God. For next episode. Oh, Jason. Yeah, they bring in uh, they bring in a guy and like we don't see if they bring in a no, 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 no. This uh, Luca, Luca has enough going on. He does not need to come here. <laughs> Luca, people just start dropping Luca on all seasons of Below Deck just to come and stir up the uh, stir up some drama. The drama. Yeah. Well, this guy, she she looks at him and she says something to the effect, and it could be you know like some editing, but it looks like she's very impressed with his appearance, and so I think they're trying to lead us to believe that there might be something there. So definitely tuning in to next week's episode to find out mm. what exactly might be going on between Sunny's attraction with this new guy. Because you're right. I like Sunny a lot. I think that she could bring so much to the table if she's given more screen time. And now that Jared's out of the way and Kat's out of the way, yeah. I think that, yeah, I think some of these other cast members are going to get a lot more, you know, television time. And that'll be good for her. One, well, the other person that I want to see more of is Zandy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah vampire anna witch i think she's so <laughs> fun she's so calm under pressure dealing with cat and her nonsense i want to see her get more screen time and i want to see her have a conversation with barbie on air yeah well okay so let's talk about zandy in this episode because you're right she's normally very calm but we saw a little bit of a little tension between her and cat for a second because um we saw Frazier showing them how he likes the beds made and really being hands on. Everybody's being really good in their jobs on these episodes. I mean, Frazier was doing the things. We see Captain Carrie helping everybody out. And then we see Kat. And throughout, Kat is working diligently. I think she only has like two or three speaking lines throughout the entire episode before she gets fired. So she's working and crying throughout the entire episode. 
And then finally, Zandy looks at her the job that she's done and says, hey, you know, you missed a spot here. There's some stuff you could do over here. If you can look back over there, and, and you could tell that Zandy's annoyed because she's like, what have you been doing all day to have- These problems keep happening. Right. It's like, I can't keep going behind you and fixing these things. But when she says it, Kat just loses it. She's done. She's like, all right, that's it. That is the straw that broke the camel's back. Jason, I, I don't know what to say about Kat because it's a she gets a phone call from her friend. Let's talk whatever, about the phone call, Chappelle. Yeah, whatever that was call was, just what was it real? Jason, what are you trying to say? I mean, I was I was reading a lot of comments on the Below Deck subreddit, and many people think that Kat asked her friend to call with an anonymous emergency as a way to get out of it. Like, you know, you what? have someone call you 30 minutes after a blind date or like ruin last season, you know, watching that I was full on conspiracy that it was just a cover to get out of the show. Yeah. What do you think? Have you not heard about this? No, Jason. What? If we okay. were live, the chat would be going crazy. Everyone has seen this. They know about it, but me, everybody knows about it, but me. Okay, cool. Okay. So, so, Okay. Let's just set the stage. So she gets a phone call. She's like, uh, her friend's like, oh my God, I need to talk to you. Da, 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 da. She tells us, my friends are like my family. When they're going through something, I have to go through it with them. But I cannot tell you what it's about. I cannot disclose what this information is about. Just know it's it's important. It's driving me crazy. And so you're telling me that the people online have, 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 have assumed that She's trying to get out of her job. She's done here. She's like, hey, call, call me, say there's an emergency. I'm going to cry a little bit and then they're going to let me leave. That's what's going on. I saw many people saying this in the subreddit episode or comments thread about this episode. I did not think about this when I was watching this. I did not think that. But once I read it and then started thinking about it, it makes so much sense, Chappelle. What a great out. Jason. She knows she's going to get fired too. She is terrible at her job. <laughs> like she is worse than the Sprouts heiress from last season. Remember her? Oh God. Yeah. And there, and there've been some bad people. This, this, so, this is yeah. pretty bad. Jason. And I've been, so I've been, so you, I've, you believe yeah, this. Go. No, I'm yeah. asking you. So, so you're in, you're all in on this uh, conspiracy. I'm all in. Hmm. Okay. See, now I'm looking at the episode completely different. Cause I was like, you know, she just, you know, I was about to come in here and be like, Kat's been so down on her luck. She hasn't been able to, like, really bond with these people. Um, her friends are gone, and they're going through it. And I just, my heart bleeds for this woman. But now, I kind of like your theory better. I like your theory a little bit better. I think I think Kat wanted out, Jason. I think she was afraid to just quit. And so she needed, she needed a way to get away from these people. And just, and I don't bond with you is not a reason. That's not a reason. Captain Carey has high expectations. She respects him. They had that one-on-one -on -one time. He would not let her leave based on that unless it was some sort of an emergency. What? Wow. I feel like I feel bamboozled. You know, look, look, okay. And I could I'm be gonna... getting bamboozled right now. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. No, you're right. You're it right. All okay. makes sense. So, I, I, I'm going to hold your conspiracy higher. Just because I like it. I like it. It's, it's I like that. That's a, that's a good way of looking at this. I saw what I saw in the episode. People, if you're listening to this, in the comments, tell us what you think. Let us know if you think that it's Kat was just having, you know, she was down bad. It was just time for her to go. Or the cat cook this up to get away out of here. Because this crying and stuff, she does. She makes a little bit of a scene. She does. She's like, it's, I'm over it. And she, she storms out. Bar Barbie kind of passively asks her, hey, you, you want to talk about it? And she's like, no. And then she, <laughs> That was incredible. She, yeah. <laughs> Barbie does not get up and follow her. She just lets her go. Like, all right. You said you didn't want to talk. Um, Fraser is the one who decides to go and check on her. And I think, I think you're right. I think that if you want somebody to release you from your job, Fraser is the type of person who would be willing to do that for you. He's done with it. He's talked to you several times. He knows you're going through. You've expressed that you're not having a great time. And now you have this situation that you can't even talk about on camera or period. Fraser is the type of person to come in and say, all right, for your own mental health, maybe you should go. And she does, again, just like Jared, she doesn't put up a fight at all. She's like, yeah, you're right. Maybe I should go. The math maths. The math is mathing. This is crazy. Okay. So like Andy. I said, I'm going to leave it up for interpretation right now, but I like it. Yeah. And I, I agree with what you were saying. She knew Frazier would come just like he did at the bar. 
Yeah. And if you think he, about that scene a few episodes ago when, you know, she started crying and had to leave them, he came to comfort her. It was just like that. But now she had this, like you said, emergency she can't talk about. And he gives her the opportunity because he also knows she's not very good at her job. She seems like a really nice person, actually. I do think she's really fun, but she's cracking under the pressure right now because she doesn't have her support system. And that's bringing everyone else on their crew down. So he wants to let her walk. She didn't even talk to Captain Carey. You know, it would be different. Like, Captain Carey's in charge. She didn't go to Captain Carey and say, hey, boss, I think I'm going to have to go. I'm having some mental health struggles. I got uh, some personal stuff. She talks to Fraser, and Fraser talks to Captain Carey. It says, all right, Captain Carey, she's about to go. I already told her to pack her stuff up. And he says, I trust, him. I trust Fraser's opinion. But my thing is, how often does that happen where you like you you, are, you quit your job, but you don't actually talk to your boss about it? You just kind of, well, did she, okay, pause. Is this a quit or did she get fired? I guess that's the real question here because. They mutually parted ways. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. That, okay. Uh, I feel like this is a quit now. I think I she quit like before she got fired. Yeah, I think this is a quit. Like she let Fraser fri fire her. But it does feel like it was by design because she didn't she didn't she didn't do anything wrong to get fired. I mean, if they wanted to fire her for being bad at her job, they could have been did that, you know. So, yeah. Hmm. Now I'm suspicious of her. But I do appreciate the episode because, yeah, now I have something to think about. I mean, I guess if there's a way to get out of your job, that would definitely be a way to do it. She really has no issue crying on camera so she did that throughout the entire episode she had no speaking lines at all um but i do believe the tears were real oh yeah for sure i think she was ready to go i think that's oh. what it was she probably texts her friend i'm miserable i'm crying i'm off like it's awful and her friend calls her like hey i'm gonna get you out of this like i maybe it might not have been cat's plan but that's probably how it worked out and Chappelle, something that i loved about it and we haven't even talked about them at all yet is you know she's leaving right and her exit and think about like we're guests on this yacht and <laughs> all of a sudden this like tender pulls up and one of the staff one has to mysteriously leave no one's telling us why i they don't need entertainment they don't need a mardi gras party imagine the conspiracy theories we would be coming up with and then you'd have that story to tell everyone you see at every party you go to Mm -hmm. see you've been friends with Sasha too long see that's exactly what that is because I thought the same thing I said if this was us me Ty Jason and Sasha standing there on the boat watching somebody we're like oh where is she going what is she doing is she coming back well what happened I mean at that point we're all in the in the in there in the cruise business like we couldn't make it to dinner without being crying like, all day oh yeah for sure we're, we're definitely like, in the we cruise business we're not we're not going to make it through dinner without asking them a million times. So how's what's happening to that one woman? Is she coming back? She was so nice. We're definitely going to have all the tea. Uh -huh. Yeah. OK, so we lose cat. We lose cat. She made it seven episodes as well. I think a lot of people suspect that she would get fired for doing her job poorly. But this is not that same type of exit. I think I'm kind of surprised that it happened like this, because when I hear that there's going to be a lot of firings, I'm thinking people are going to do uh poorly at their job right or they're gonna get in fights or something like that's gonna happen i think cat orchestrating her own firing i think kind of it's, it's interesting but it's not what i was expecting for her throughout the season i feel similarly i didn't think she would be leaving because she's an emotional wreck i i really did like her i i could easily see in the first episode chappelle like this was not what she is cut out to do Mm -hmm. You know, bless her heart. She just wasn't getting it. And she was just levels behind the rest of her team, I felt, of her crew, you know, with Zandy and Barbie. And there was such a learning curve that she just couldn't really get up to their standard. And then all of this emotional trauma um, started coming back to her and flooding her emotions. And it was entertaining, I got to say. Um, week yeah. after week, seeing her go through it. Um, but I just really felt bad for her in this whole episode. Um, and want her. I hope she's doing better, honestly, and that she's with her friends and her family and doing the best. And I, I'm it was fun though with her in seven episodes. Like she was never on screen, Chappelle, where I was like, oh my god, cat, or yeah, oh, she's terrible. Like I felt yeah. about other people on the show in other seasons. 
Mm -hmm. She brought us drama. She really did. Because her crying was weighing on other people. It was weighing on Fraser. He's trying to navigate that. Navigating Barbie as well. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. The the beef only one person knew about. So, yeah. She's gone. And now they're down two people, Jason. And I don't know. Like I said, I've seen... I've seen how Captain Sandy deals with stuff, being down one person, being down two people. And it wasn't great. It was not pretty on Below Deck Med last season. It, it got tough in a lot of spots. They, it felt like they were always, always like just trying to play catch up at all times. But I don't know. I have a lot more faith in Captain Carey based on what we've seen. I don't I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because he's. Uh, he seems like he's a little bit more hands-on than Captain Sandy was. I was just about to say that. It's because he's willing to step in and help them. And that mm-hmm. really makes a difference and makes them want to work harder because they see their boss putting in that sweat equity with them, not afraid to get his hands dirty. And that makes them, I think, want to do better and have higher standards. Yeah. Um, do, well, Cause we'll see the charter, like these, the, the new guests, right. They come in and all of this firing and stuff is happening while this is happening. I mean, Captain Carey, even he he's the one who carries cats luggage out, you know, to the, uh, to the tender. Yeah. So He's very hands on, but throughout he's helping the the guests with their luggage, right? He's helping them bring their stuff on. He never sits down. It just looks like he's always helping. And then when we do see him sit down, he's looking over resumes because he needs to replace Jared. And now he needs to replace Jared and Kat at the same time. So his work is cut out for him. But I think this is going to be pretty smooth sailing because this this group of guests that we have this episode, they just they seem fine. They seem very nice. Rich, that's about it, Jason. I didn't see no drama with this with this group. They don't seem like they're going to start any drama. They like to party. They, you know, that's what we learned about them. That's really the only thing I know about them. I want to see them let loose. I want to see, you know, maybe one of them fall out of the hot tub, um, fall down the slide, you know, in the next <laughs> episode. I want to learn more about them because I want to see fun. I want to see the guests having fun, and that's something I think we've kind of we haven't seen as much so far this season. I've kind of been like feeling very meh about the guests. Mm-hmm. And, I, wanted, yeah. and I, I know from what I've was spoiled on the below deck subreddit earlier today, there's going to be some fun guests upcoming in the next few episodes. So I'm looking forward to them. What do you think about the guests that this week? <sighs> so these guests, I feel like these guests did have fun, but it was just so it was, it was just normal fun that you probably wouldn't film and put on Bravo, you know, like they were doing the, the water sports. They're out there on the jet skis. They seem like be drinking. They enjoyed the food. They seem very nice. They're, it's like, it's very kumbaya, very like, oh, this is this is nice. That's not really what I signed up for. I kind of need, I need a little, I need a little edginess to my guests. These these people are just fine. Well, and like that tells me they're probably gonna leave like a just fine tip. Oh, uh, see, and th- yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I think even like in the past when we've seen the the hardcore rude guests, they were give, they gave a lot of money, you know. <laughs> so it's kind of like know what they are. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, they're like, okay, we gave you a hard time. You've earned your paycheck this time. Whereas these, this group, I don't know. I feel like maybe they'll tip well, but it just seems like there's nothing to them except for just they're, they're, they work in real estate. They make some money. They seem nice. That's it. Just no, no drama. Just kind of chill. I want to see them in Conspiracy Corner in the next episode talking about oh. how two people that were there yesterday are no longer there today. Oh man. No, see, you're right about that. That would be so much fun if we got to watch the guests try to process Jared leaving and Kat leaving. Cause I don't think they really got to know Jared. I think they might've got him out the way before the guests got there, but the cat leaving thing was interesting because they did watch the whole thing happen. Um, and so, yeah, they, I would love to see what the guest perspective is on that because they seem to be noticing that that was probably the most interesting thing about them to me yeah. was that while this was happening, they watched the whole thing. So while these two people left Chappelle, something that, you know, I'm still so new in Below Deck. So last season, we saw something that absolutely shocked me, where people that had left the crew, got fired, chose to leave, came back to meet up with them at the bar later in the season. Do you think that Jared or Kat are going to come? We're going to see them again, like, say, episode 15, meeting up on a night out with the rest of the crew. If we see Cat again, then I completely take back everything I said, and I know it was a conspiracy. I believe the subreddit because she acted like there's just no way she could be in the room with these people for that long. I just don't connect with them. I just feel like I'm just I, these aren't my type of people. She was miserable at the bar with them. 
I better not see Kat on a Bravo screen again. You know, like she's done. She's done. The way she acted was just like, she just, she felt like it wasn't her type of party. Like this just isn't for her. So for her to come back, I'm like, all right, all right, this is a scam. You know, all right, all right cut the cameras. I, I right. can tell this is a setup. In her defense, though, hearing you say that too, like, you know, we've all worked at places where you don't vibe with everybody. Yeah, but why would you go to the bar with them then? Well, it's because they have to on the show. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, could Kat choose to stay behind? Like, she, what, would she have to pretend to be sick to not have no. to? No. Aren't they forced That's... to go out? Yes. I mean, why would she come back? You know, oh, now okay, that she's yeah. gone, I never want to see her again. No disrespect to her, but as miserable as she was, what is she going to bring to the table by showing up at the bar? You know, like, she didn't want to drink and party with them when she worked with them. Why would she want to do it now? To rub it in their faces that she's cooler than them. <laughs> all of her friends, her whole posse, they'll show up, roll into the bar. Yes. I would love to see maybe Kat and her friends on a charter. You know, so then she's like, shows up like, oh, the bed isn't made correctly. Uh, <laughs> <Could> you imagine? <laughs> yeah. Cat shows up and she has complaints. She's like, the laundry's not done the way I want it to be done. Uh, because now she knows what to expect. And then she can, you know, she can be a little picky about, you know, the amenities. See, that's the only way I would want her back. And then Jared, again, Jared cannot come back either. You know, he the way he was acting with the charter and uh, on the boat was just that his mind wasn't in the right place. He was so worried about his kid. His kid's in Alaska. He wasn't able to get on the phone with him. Cool. Go handle that. You know, go handle that. Be with your family. Get your life together. I know we probably won't see Cat again ever. But Jason, do you think there's a world where we could get Jared back on a different season once he's gotten his personal matters together? Yes. Ooh, okay. I think uh, so too. I do because I feel they have portrayed him as someone who's hardworking. He's family oriented. He's a dad. You know, that was the center of his drama was his desire to like zoom with his daughter. And I think mm -hmm. coming from that wholesome place, it brings in viewers. A lot of people want to see that type of um, person on the show. There aren't very many people, at least in my small below deck experience, I haven't seen very many parents um, like that are deck hands or bosuns and talking about that journey with their kids and being away from their kids. And I think Bravo mm -hmm. could see that as a way to bring other people in. So they would want to give him a chance but they got to spice it up. Um, yeah. Give him a yeah. makeover maybe or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think Jared would be good for drama if his head is in the right place, you know, because before he's like getting stressed out, he did connect with Barbie very quickly. It just seems like once his stress levels started to, to rise, he wasn't able to maintain that relationship or even a good working relationship on the boat. But yeah, I think that if he gets his, his family situation handled, I could see him coming back in the future and potentially being like maybe a deckhand. Maybe he doesn't need to be bosun. You know, maybe that'll be the built-in drama that, that they give it. us. He, yeah. Yeah. He comes in and maybe he's uh he's the deckhand and Ben is the bosun. Yeah. Bring us next season. Ben is in charge and Jared has to be the subordinate and see how they interact at that point. Cause I don't think he's gonna go for that. No chance. No, no. Um, but we really we talked about Ben a little bit, but I do want to get into Ben's finer points in this uh, episode because he hasn't had a lot of big moments in the season thus far. But like we said earlier, he's really good at this bosun job. I, I I don't think I've seen anybody take to it as quickly as him. Maybe except for maybe Luca. Luca did a really good job picking up this stuff, but I don't think Ben makes any mistakes in this episode. I agree. He's very calm um, in this profession. He's You can tell he's done this before, and he's not rattled by the drama on the boat. And that is something, Chappelle, that sets him apart from almost everyone else. It just doesn't mm -hmm. seem to bother him. And even like yeah. the drama he had with Sonny when he said something over the walkie, he's like, well, that's not drama. That's just work. And I appreciate that about him because he's also like in the weeds. Like he is... In, he's not afraid to get messy. And that's what I like about him. And like when Kat left, you know, I don't know if you heard his remarks. Oh, no. What did he say? That's yachting. Yeah, that's it. You In know, it was, like, <laughs> yeah, he was like, well, that, you, you know, the show goes on. And I, I think you're right. I appreciate I think, it. Yeah, he's he's good. He's good for business right now. I would love to see some drama between him and Sonny just because, I mean, it feels like they're tiptoe tiptoeing through a landmine. You know, you just don't date your supervisors because of reasons like this, especially this is they're not even dating. They're just kind of messing around. I feel like the, the capacity to be really, really messy is right there. And I kind of want to see it. 
So another potential drama I think that could mm-hmm. happen with Ben, because, you know, this season I feel, and we're talking about it right now, is like really focused on the profession, the work ethic. That's Captain mm-hmm. Carey's, you know, style. But now that Ben's been promoted, when they have those leadership conversations, it's Anthony, it's Fraser, who are super tight. And now yeah. Ben is joining them. And when they have the three of them have to work together, uh, how is Ben going to navigate those two pre-existing relationship? Because it's they're clearly always going to agree. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Because my see, survivor fan brain thinking. No, you you you're giving me a lot to talk about here because the edit is interesting. Because throughout the season, if we don't see anybody else's relationship, we're always going to see Fraser and Anthony every time. I, we see at least one character moment mm-hmm. between the two of them every episode. So where it's clear that they're tight, you know, he even calls his mom and he's talking to his mom on this episode. I love that. And Fraser walks here to talk. I know this was so cool. And I was like, oh, their friendship is dope. But why do y'all keep showing us that? You know, what do you like? Is there something going to be there? Mm. Like, is, is, is there going to be drama with Ben, you know, or something? Because that's clearly a duo and it's going to be an unbreakable pair. I would hate to see them have a falling out, but if they have to double team someone else, I'd be down to watch that fight. When they get in the fight with Ben, remember this moment. And yeah. Captain Carroll was just sitting there being like, you're all such good leaders and you're so good at your job. Just really get, achieve consensus. Come on. And then he'll just get up and walk away. Yeah. I, I can see that because Ben's new here. You know, like I said, uh, with Fraser and Anthony, they've been they've been working together this whole time. They've been venting to each other as well. We'll see every time Fraser's had issues with Kat or Barbie, he can talk to Anthony about it. And Anthony's so chill. He's a good sounding board for this kind of stuff. But he hasn't worked with Ben yet. And we so, haven't seen any content with him and Ben. Right, right. There's a few relationships that we haven't really been acknowledging throughout this season. And I think with Jared being gone... There's a, you know, there's there's a po- possibility for something like that to happen. So, okay. I like that a lot. Because, uh, yeah, okay. Because now, now I'm all in. I'm all in on that drama, too. Because I'm really team Fraser and Anthony. They can do no wrong in my eyes. This is one of my favorite pairs I've seen on Blood Deck so far. Same. Their energy, it's authentic. It's real. You can tell they really get along. And I think it's because they're both kind of like independent. You know, Anthony's the only person in his department. Fraser feels like as the leader, he has to be that supervisor now. He's not there to be their friend. And I think just their energy and the fact that Fraser speaks French. Mm, um, yeah. and I think that really helps Anthony feel very comfortable and able to express himself in a different way that he can't with the other crew members. Mm-hmm. Anthony's French accent does come up in this episode as well because the guests are into it. You know, uh, he's bringing out the food. The food looks amazing, and he's talking about it. And I don't know who this one charter guest is, but she's kind of—I think she's into him. She's like, "Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he can say anything to me." I—I I, I kind of want to see if she's going to make a move because she's doing a lot of flirting, in my opinion. That would be incredible, and I—I'm I, pretty sure you know we've seen that in past seasons where. The charter guests get a little drunk and maybe they enter into the galley and start, you know, flirting with the chefs. Mm-hmm. I'm here. Yeah. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. Anthony's good. He's good. This woman seems to be into it. She's like, she just keeps every time he does something, she's like, oh my God, he can just say, he can say whatever he wants, his accent. Oh my God. I love his eyebrows. Fraser says he has eyelashes like a baby camel. Um, <laughs> Fletcher, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, like a baby. Yeah. Fraser Fletcher. Frazier, he's like, you don't know my name. It's a, it's fine. But uh, I don't think they're they're paying too much attention to him because everybody's wowed by Anthony in this episode. Uh, so a great episode for him, for sure. Uh, awful episode for Jared and Barbie. They, I mean, uh, Jared and Kat, they're both gone. Um, but now we're down to people. And Jason, I know that because of the, the scene for the next episode, we're at least getting a deckhand. But I don't recall if we saw that they were replacing another person for the interior. So they might still be down one. And I'm excited for that because I really want to see what, what it looks like when Zandy and Barbie have to interact. I know you listen to the podcast. Sasha brought it up before, apparently on Watch What Happens Live. Zandy and Barbie don't have a relationship at all to this point after this after the season's over. And there has to be a reason why that they just, I mean, is it just that they just don't mesh well or is there a fight coming? I need to know. Or did the fight already happen? Did the fight already happen? So, so, so the no, fight- that's what I want to know. Like, I have to ask you, you know, you're, you are the professional here, right? 
you know that <laughs> I'm watching this. I've never seen them on screen together. They don't interact. Yeah. They don't say anything negative about each other either. Mm -hmm. um, they're neutral, which indicates to me that they have bad blood. And yeah. when did it happen? I want to hear everything. I think whatever animosity is between them is going to erupt like a volcano and create drama that impacts everyone. And that maybe uh, it will be so big that that could be the season ending drama. Um, that something so bad happens um, because the fact that they don't have an existing relationship now is the fishiest thing because we haven't even seen them say, I'm going to unfollow you. Like I remember that with Matt and Kyle. The first thing I mm -hmm. did was unfollow him. Where is that content? We're not getting any of it. And it's, I, I'm, torn, I'm torn because I like Zandy and I like I Barbie know. separately and I don't want them to be in turmoil. Comma, but I am here to watch a television show with drama. And if they're not fighting, somebody needs to be fighting, damn it. And so <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm okay with it. But you're right. As far as the fight already happening, I'm with you on that. It's like their, their apathy toward each other makes me think that there has to have been something there to where they're not even, it doesn't even seem like they're cordial. It just kind of seems like they don't acknowledge the other's existence unless they have to. Um, but I'm also leaning toward believing that if Barbie really had beef with Zandy, she wouldn't be able to hold it back. You know, why isn't she saying it on camera? I, I think Zandy, I, I could see her not saying anything, but you have to believe Barbie would have said something, right? Oh, Chappelle, I hadn't even thought about that. I, yeah. oh yeah, Barbie definitely would be, Barbie would be telling us every episode how much Zandy gets under her skin. She thinks that this argument we had doesn't matter. Does she not mm -hmm. like, oh, but we'll maybe, maybe we'll never know. Like, could you imagine if they go the whole season without ever mentioning it? Jason, I will rage quit. I will rage quit because I have to know, you know, why say it on Watch What Happens Live and did not show it to me? is because she shouldn't have said it. If she shouldn't, if she didn't say it on Watch What Happens Live, I probably would have acknowledged that they haven't talked to each other, but I wouldn't be so invested in why, you know. But now will they like, have a reunion this season. No, they're not having a reunion. I think okay. those are done. I think they shut okay. those down. Uh, the last reunion was that we saw was so ghetto with them. Just like there was like people doing construction and stuff. It was people are on Zoom. It was it was bad. It was bad. But okay, okay. But I do think the fight is coming. I think the fight has to come because I think now that everyone's in close quarters. Because remember, Zandy was in charge of Cat and Barbie. Now she's just in charge of Barbie, and so. Unless Barbie is absolutely perfect at her job, then Zandy is going to have to say something to her eventually. And we know Barbie doesn't take criticism well sometimes. Like sometimes she's like, hey, why are you talking to me so much? Why get off me? I got it. You know, not to say that she can't take criticism, but we've seen how she deals with Fraser in those moments. So I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, just keeping Kat out of the way might give these two a, a, a chance to bump heads a little bit more. And I think it's going to increase the potential for their fight when the new interior person comes, because I think it's going to be that new interior person that they're both trying to woo to their side. Mm. Who's that person going to want to work with? And how is that going to affect their pre-existing animosity driven relationship? Because I think Barbie or Zandy could react about who the, the new interior person picks, or if new interior person says one of those comments like you're describing, well, are you sure you're doing this the right way? And oh, yeah. that's what starts the Barbie Zandy fight. I think it could be this person we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Cause um, I think they had a joint enemy and not, not to call cat their enemy, but you know, they both had somebody really? they could mutually, you know, look at as like, okay, this person is the, the weakest link. So they really couldn't, they didn't have to focus on each other. But if you bring in a third person who's generally like, uh, generally likable, who's good at their job, that both of them kind of want to be cool with, then we might see a little bit of the push and pull where, you know, oh, this is my friend, this is my friend, and we Your work together closely. Like this person works person closely. The best. Ooh. Fraser, oh, they bring in a new person, and Fraser has a new, a new best friend. Yeah, Barbie's going to hate that. Barbie's going to hate that, but I do think that that would, that would kind of push Zandy a little bit to the background and she doesn't seem like she minds being in the background. She does you know? it. So I don't know I, what I'm rooting for is the new person comes in, but give us like an episode or two where it's just, the, just this little smaller crew, because I really want to know what's going on here. Maybe there's nothing, maybe we're tripping and there's nothing there, 
But this is where we come to talk about it, and this is where we do to speculate because there's so many conspiracies. I'm afraid to get into the subreddit uh, because now I don't want to be spoiled on anything. But I also wonder if other people are thinking the same thing. So if you're listening to this, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Zandy versus Barbie, is it coming soon? Um, and how do you think we're going to get there? Because we are not even probably halfway through this season at this point. Below Deck is good to drop 20 some odd episodes on us. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's been long seasons leading up to this, Jason. So I feel like we got a lot more to talk about. I love that it's a gift that keeps giving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's year round. Dear God, you finish one Below Deck and then you go to the next one. I don't know what's next. I think Down Under would be next, maybe. Mm. Maybe. So, Chappelle, I have to ask you this question. As you know, we're starting to wrap up. Who mm-hmm. on this season would you think would do the best on Trader Season 3? Oh, okay. The Traders. The, I think I would love to see Barbie on the Traders because she would be the best TV. But I think Fraser would be fun. I think Fraser would be a fun trader. I think he's such good TV as well. But also, I think he has a real, like... Um, the way he speaks to people is very like it's very soothing, but it's also direct. And I think that that's something that could lull them into a false insecurity. If he's a traitor or even a faithful, I don't think anybody's going to like think that tr- they, to accuse uh, Fraser of that kind of thing. So I would love to see it. What about you? you uh, do any of these characters stand out for you as like an all star or somebody we need to see on a different show? Well, that's you made great suggestions for traitors. I think Ben would be the best person to be on the traitors. Because I think his oh. demeanor also, he's very calming, but he also isn't afraid to get in the weeds and get to cause the mess. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it'd be good drama. Other than him, the other people I think I could see being on shows, I totally agree with Barbie. I also think Sonny could do really well on another mm-hmm. type of show where it's not based on like physical work. Um, but I think she could also be like on the challenge, maybe. Why not? I think Zandy, I mean, this is great casting. Like I'm naming them all because I like them and it's fun to watch them. And I haven't felt that way about the other below deck seasons I've watched. Um, yeah. And I like that they're more endearing um, this group, but I just want to it endear me to drama and watch them fight. Cause that's why I watch below deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a very likable cast. This is a very likable cast. I think, I think if I had to rank everybody in my head right now, of who's left over, I think, I think I like Ben the least, but it's not by a lot, right? It's not like he's done anything awful that I'm like, you know, maybe still got some sore feelings about those earlier episodes. But everybody else is pretty much on level playing field. Like, I love Zandy. I like Barbie a lot. Uh, Captain Carey's amazing. He's my favorite captain thus far. Uh, Can we get yeah. Anthony on Top Chef? Or like I, guys' yeah. grocery games? I mean, put him on some Food Network show. I mean, yeah, we got to get Anthony back on TV. Kyle is way, way too chill to be back on TV. I, I think he's fun, but like we need to get Kyle out of work. We need to get him on like a party show or something where it's like uh, where he could just go hang out. Maybe he him on the challenge, you know, or something. Oh, where, yeah. Yeah. Where he could just kind of relax and be around a lot of people his age and just have fun uh, and then maybe compete. I don't know if he's a competitor or not, but I think that all of these cast members are pretty good. And so. I need them to bring in a villain. I need a villain. I need them to bring in something to spice this up a little bit because it's a little too, it's nice. Everybody's happy. It's a little too nice, you know? It's way too nice. Mm-hmm. It's and time. it's just waiting to that breaking point. And that's what I, as a fan, watch this show waiting to see, um, both as a viewer of this show, but also as like a viewer in real life. When things are going really well, I'm like looking around a room to be like, okay, like when's the drama coming? Who is going to be yeah. the villain in this meeting to spice things up? Yeah, we got to find it. We don't have one right now, but I'm sure we'll get one before the end of the season. But Jason, is there anything else you want to add about this episode? No, it's been great. Um, I thought it was a fun episode and I'm excited to see what happens on the rest of the season. Yeah, me too. Definitely really ready to get into what's coming next. Uh, Like I said, we saw that we're bringing in some help. And I'm hoping that they spice things up a little bit. But in the meantime, Jason, thank you so much for coming. Uh, So clutch as usual. I know you got a lot of skiing and stuff to get back to, but tell everybody what you're up to, what you've been working on and where they can find you. Thanks, Chappelle. I appreciate it. I being invited, talking about below deck. Everyone, you can find me in the Twitter streets where I'm at the real J.O. I'm posting about, like Chappelle said, my skiing adventures, thoughts about below deck, Survivor, Australian Survivor, and of course, my Kansas Jayhawks in March Madness. Did you see that big win in the first round? Hopefully, we saw the big win. Another game. (laughs) 
We saw <laughs> it. We saw it. We saw Everybody it. is tweeting about it. Everybody's tweeting about it. Okay, it's March Madness. We'll get over it. Okay, we'll move on to the next. Jason, thank you so much again. Um, hopefully, you can come back later on the season and come on with me and Sasha are both here. We can talk about this a little bit more. Maybe when we get some drama, maybe when some drama picks up, we'll have you back on so we can uh, chop it up and then let everybody know what we think and get some more conspiracy theories going. Because I know Sasha's going to be so salty that she was not here for the cat conspiracy because I know she's at home kicking herself that she wasn't able to talk about it. Um, but as far as I go, People can follow me on all social media platforms at Recap Kickback and join the YouTube channel. Subscribe to youtube.com uh, slash at Recap Kickback to keep up with all the stuff I have going on. And I have a lot going on on the Kickback. Also on RHAP, um, still talking about um, Deal or No Deal Island, doing exit interviews for Deal or No Deal Island. I have Club Condo where Rob and I talk about Survivor every week. Nothing but Netflix every week. I think Taryn's with me this week to talk about Three Body Problem on Netflix, which is a number one show on Netflix. I heard it was good. So I can't wait to talk about it with Taryn. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. So, yeah, follow me on social media. Of course, subscribe to the Below Deck. Rehap us read if you haven't already. And then until next time, we will see you all later. Peace out. Bye. See ya.